Today, I wanna to fill you guys in on the remaining to-do list before I can get this car painted. Sometimes the order in which I do things and the level to which they're completed is a little wacky. So now that the seats are in, uh, that allows me to finish the roll bar because before I could mount the roll bar, I needed to establish the height of the harness bar that goes across the back. The other remaining items have to do with the interior as well. I'm trying to get all the welding done and that means doing the seat mounts for the passenger side. It also means finishing up these seat pans. I uh, poked holes in the seat pans to allow those camber boxes to come through and I need to do a little more clearancing and blend those in, in addition to welding in the roll bar and uh, adding in some gusset plates here to the B pillars and I want to make some removable uh, diagonal bars that go across the doors here. The list is getting shorter you guys. The nice thing is these seats do recline. So that's too far reclined. The car's kind of on a, on these tire stands in the front, so it's hard to tell what's the most comfortable, but. I mean, probably right there seems comfortable to me, at, at least at this point without a steering wheel or pedals. But really what's important is the height of these cutouts for a racing harness relative to a bar that's gonna go right across the, uh, the, the back here. So let me show you the rule book again. It's not much of an outlaw or a hot rod if you're always following the rules, right? But I think these do provide some, some safety guidance. So here's a side view of the seat. They recommend a 10 degree angle of this uh, webbing that goes from the uh, holes in the seat all the way down to the rear of the harness bar. So 10 degrees, and then from the top view, this is kind of where your butt goes. They have no more than 20 degrees from the center line of the seat that the webbing can either go um, convergent like this or divergent. They can actually crisscross if you want them to, but no more than 20 degrees. And on this page, they actually recommend adding the harness bar between the back stays. And let's go look at the car. And this happens to basically line up pretty well with the seat center. Uh, this is the driver's side and it lines up pretty well with the seat center. So if I was to put a bar between these diagonals, then I could attach this shoulder strap pretty easily. It'd be way long because um, it comes all the way down to about here, but there's nothing to attach this side to. And I suppose I could do that's a tw less than 20 degree angle this way, but then the two straps would be kind of on top of each other. I'm not sure that is allowed. So the other option is to maybe put a different harness bar in. Okay, I could attach the harness bar to the main hoop and locate it with a bend that goes about here. So that would give me enough distance between the seat and the main hoop so that there's some hardware. You know, if, it, if the straps loop around, there's a clasp and stuff here in the middle. So you can't have the harness bar directly behind the seat. It's got to have some distance behind it. This inclinometer has been zeroed out here on the door sill. And then I have this string going through the holes in the back of the seat and attached here to the, to the firewall. So I'm going to measure that angle. Pretty much guessed it right on at 11 degrees. Okay, I put a little mark on the bar and I sort of eyeballed it, you know, where it intersects that line. Um, it's going to basically come straight even with this with this quarter window sill. Before I take the roll bar out one more time, I wanted to show you this tube that I've uh, just mocked up here. This is going between the new camber boxes 
and the rear coilover turrets. And that's going to really lock in these rear suspension components. This is done for performance and stiffness. Now that the uh, rear attachment is up higher, it has a tendency to twist on the torsion bar. So that twisting action will be uh, eliminated here due to this bar tying into the shock turrets and also to the cage. Super glad that I put the hole in the firewall so it wouldn't be possible without having had that hole right there. Probably just use one inch bar there. I have just returned from the Urban Workshop and got these uh, bends here in the harness bar. Now I just need to do the, uh, the coping fish mouth here on the, uh, the ends. So I, I left these long so that the bender could do its thing. So I just have my protractor out. I'm going to uh, try to sight what the angle is here. Yep, I'm gonna call it nine. This digital angle meter is uh, here on the end and it's about nine degrees. This is the tube I want to trim and this is a vertical uh, spare piece of tube that I have. And I covered this in a previous video, but this is how you mark the tube in order to notch it. So you trace the line even with the perpendicular tube, kind of eyeball it, and then you move over a third of the diameter. So this is inch and a half tubing so that means that the a third of an inch and a half is three quarters, right? A third of an inch and a half is a half an inch. That's the cut line for this to uh, fit over a vertical tube like it will be in the car. I'm trying all kinds of creative ways to, you know, hold this in the saw. I have it lifted up so it doesn't hit the floor, but because of the cut is so close to the bend, I can't shift it over enough. Okay, I think this will work, but all my marks are on the other side of the tube, which kind of sucks because I can't see them. So I'm going to have to remark everything and be able to fit it in the saw. Now, this looks about right. I have the saw set up on those marks that I made. The bandsaw is done all I can do. There's no way I can clamp and make this last cut here. So I'm gonna have to do that with my angle grinder. So put this guy away. Okay, like I said, it's uh, pretty close, but not perfect. I have those pliers there underneath just to uh, keep that nine degree angle consistent. That's approximately what it is in the car. I put the bar in the car and it's just uh, hanging here with some strings kind of holding it for me. And this side, good news is, is fitting pretty well. I don't know if it's in its correct position. If you look at it from the side here, it, it is sort of level with the quarter window. And uh, this fish mouth here is fitting, fitting okay. But here's the problem over on this side. This is way off. Here's the view across the back. And I'm not 100% sure what happened here, but this is not matching up very well. It's off by almost half an inch and the fish mouth, nothing is really fitting on this side. So um, I cut it conservatively. There's a, a few things I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. If I shift this side over, 
It's got a big gap on the bottom. I think I made a mistake cutting the, the fish mouth on the bottom at the wrong angle. I think I had the top and bottom confused. If I lower the bar, um, if I lower the bar down in the car, it, uh, the, hoop, the main hoop gets a little bit wider. So right now it's not sitting as low as it should. So I think I'm gonna lower those strings down a little bit. And then the other factor is, like I said, I made a conservative cut. I think as I cut more of this harness bar away, um, the more I cut away, the narrower it gets. So I think it's a combination of just lowering the bar and then making these fish mouths even deeper so it's gonna move the bar in and lower. There's still plenty of room here. I have like, uh, I don't know, full hand width. That's probably like eight inches or something. I hope I can save it, but as of right now, this is certainly not my best fit. It's just a difficult little junction here. It's really a compound corner between the way the main hoop leans back. It also leans in, and then this is trying to be flat with the sill. So I'm just gonna have to power my way through it and uh, get it done. But for now, I'm gonna call it a night. All right, today's a new day and I've taken the roll bar out of the car. It's gonna need a lot of work to make this fit. I'm not too bummed out about it. This is what I encourage you guys to do. Um, you know, tackle difficult things and this is kind of what I've been doing for the whole car. You know, making things fit. I'm gonna cover up the car so it doesn't get full of uh, metal. This might be a better view of that the problem is, this is where this is supposed to be on this side, but on this side, it just doesn't line up. So it either is here or here. A lot of tape on here, but I think I got it to fit really well. And then this is the driver's side. And using this protractor, I was able to get the angle of the bar to be that nine degrees. So this should line up with the uh, quarter window sill. Look, there's no more strings. This is now tack welded in place. I've done enough measurements now to know that this is uh, the right position. I've made it level and there's tack welds over here too. So the fish mouth is looking pretty nice. I also learned my lesson last time about pressure building up in this harness bar. Inside this junction here, I have drilled a hole. So there's a hole going this way. So that allows pressure and, and, and smoke to kind of come through here out the base plate. There's a hole here on the base plate. So it's fully vented this time. Now I'm going to bravely just weld it all the way up. I don't see a need to trial fit this. I've already had it in the car and it's been marked. Get it done. All the way welded around now. There's a lot of uh, manipulating and twisting and turning this thing upside down. Here's a little section um, I could have done a little bit better. So if you look really closely, there's this small section right here that is a little bit undercut. So I'm actually gonna go over that again. This is just where I started and stopped. So um, I don't like that little undercut feature. So I'd rather just add more weld uh, material in there but otherwise it looks good. I hope it fits the car. And now it's in.
So if you follow this harness bar to the other side, you can see it's, it's fairly even with that uh, quarter window sill. That's what I was after. And the distance between the seat back and the harness bar is, I think it's about eight inches. It looks sufficient to me. One thing I'm probably going to have to do with uh, these straps is you're usually required to put some clamps on the tube so the strap doesn't just slip off over into this section. Uh, you don't want it to do that. You want it to stay directly behind or within 20 degrees of that opening. So there'll be some clamps and probably a spacer in between and then another clamp on that side. I believe they said don't weld onto the bar. So I'll just get some uh, aluminum clamps to go over that. I just reattached the string so you can see the angle now between the openings in the seat and this harness bar. So that is about 10 degrees. Might be a little bit more since I had to lower the bar down a bit. Started to be pretty ugly, as uh, turned out you know, pretty decent. Pretty happy with this one. I have already started filming next week's video, which is going to have these B-pillar gussets. Uh, this is a rough template. It's gonna have these speed holes in it to kind of match the strut braces and the rear coilover braces. Sort of a common theme I like in this car. Look forward to another uh, torsional rigidity test, guys, after I get this fully welded in and even some door bars in uh, towards the front. I think that should increase torsional rigidity, even though it's way back here. I think it'll do uh, wonders for the chassis. If you want to see more information on the roll cage fabrication and all the bending details and the uh, coping details, click this video right here. And check back next week for uh, more metalworking here in the seat area. Also getting those B-pillar gussets done. Thanks for watching, guys. Got at least one thing off the list.